Hello my friends and welcome back to another video. Today is all about watercolor mountains, but in the mind of someone who is an absolute beginner, who's never painted mountain mountains, I find that these are the easiest ones and we're going to be using some beautiful colors, very simple, browns, blues, and blacks. Very easy. <laughs> we will be dropping in paint and water using a wet on wet technique. We will be layering and we will be using um, paint on dry paper so wet on dry so let's get started our first mountain is going to be wet on dry now i am using a very watery wash here with my neptune size 6 brush which happens to hold a lot of water and i am laying down my first mountain now i have not sketched anything out i am just going from imagination on what a basic mountain shape would be for the colors of this mountain, I am using a very light wash of Payne's Gray. And you can see that there's not too much going on as far as texture. It's just a very light wash. If you do end up using a Neptune brush, I do find that if you press too hard down on the paper, like I ended up doing at the bottom there, that it will end up lifting some paint. Now, most watercolor brush brushes will do that, but I do find that I tend to do that a bit more with the Neptune. That's not bad, but just keep in mind that you can do that. So um, I don't typically use my Neptune brushes too much, um, so it could, could be me, which is totally fine. So now to drag the paint down, I'm just adding a bit more water and keeping it very light because I am going to end up layering these mountains. So once I'm satisfied with that, I let it dry and I move on to the second one. Now the second one is gonna be a wet on wet. So I've taken some water and I have made a rough shape of the mountain or part of the mountain because now I'm going to drop in some, for this color of mountain, I'm just using some lunar black, real simple, and I'm dropping it in because as I pull it down, that paint is going to spread wherever I laid down that water. And that's just going to make a really fun texture of a mountain. So you can play around in those white areas where you didn't add water and, and there's no paint there it can either be snow, you can make it look like there is mist, which of course, if you've been around, you know is my absolute favorite. <laughs> I love misty scenes. Probably my number one thing that I prefer to paint so but yes I am just making a very easy very loose um, style of a mountain here having some space in there and it's very light but don't worry you can always add some more paint like I am doing now and just move it around to your liking so if you end up not liking any of that white space no problem just go ahead and take your brush with some color and just go right over it and if you find that you want more white space you can either use a paper towel and dab it away or you can lift the paint out and you'll just with lifting you will just rinse your brush off dab it on a paper towel and just run your brush over the area that you want to remove the paint and the paint should lift because the paper should still be wet so I am just adding some darker areas, making some texture. I like a lot of texture. So now these are very beginner friendly mountains, very easy mountains. So it's, I'm not focusing too much on details and, you know, um, worrying about depth or, or shadows. These are very beginner friendly mountains in my opinion. So, but let me know what you think. Maybe these are hard for you or maybe you have um, a different way of painting mountains. So today's question is what's your favorite thing about the place you live? Now, this question has nothing to do with the video, but I thought it'd be fun to ask some questions around here so I can get to know you and you can get to know me and my interests and all of that. So for me, I live where there's mountains and lots of nature and so I have to say my absolute favorite thing are the birds of all things. <laughs> I really love the chickadees around here. They are so much fun and are entertaining to watch. So we really love our mountain chickadees. But I'm curious what is your favorite thing about the place you live? Is it the food? Is it the culture? Is it the landscape? Let me know.
So the mountain is somewhat drying a little bit. So as I am dropping in darker paint, it's not spreading out as much as it did, but that's okay because I like a lot of texture. So now you don't have to do your mountain like this. If you want it darker, you can let it dry and then just go over it one more time. All right, so for my third mountain, this is also going to be a mountain that we will layer. I'm using a very, very light wash. To get a light wash, you just use a little bit of paint and a bit more water. And I am using some raw sienna with a tiny bit of burnt uh, sienna with titanium white. And I am making sure that first top part is very light because now I'm going to work the base of the mountain, which I believe I ended up putting accidentally adding a bit of green in there but that's fine <laughs> and now I'm going to work from the base and kind of move the color up I want that lightest part at the top to be light because it can either be rocks or it could emphasize maybe it's snow uh, it really doesn't matter but it does create another way that you can do mountains and overall it will be light but I do want this mountain to be a bit more smoother and not so much texture. So that's what I did there. So we're going to let that dry and onto our fourth mountain, which is a mix of lunar black and some Mayan blue. And I believe whatever leftover Payne's gray I had in there. That was not intentional. Just I don't clean my uh, mixing area. <laughs> so um, which is fine but for this one I am just adding some water pulling the paint down and just using more um, pigment and going over it so that's kind of all I do similar to the one right above it but this one is much darker than that one so but you can see as I'm touching the paint that if I don't have too much paint on my brush it will end up lifting but I don't mind that so but I will do a video in the future where I will demonstrate how you can get very smooth mountains without the texture and without lifting any paint because it's nice to know how to do the different areas of mountains so and of course I will have a video of dry brush mountains which is my absolute favorite way to paint mountains I love a good dry, dry brush from trees to mountains to water just everything is dry brush for me <laughs> so yeah I am just again doing similar techniques of what I did to the one above it where I am adding in a bit more um, paint and just dabbing it into it just to give some shadow I do this with my foreground as well in my forest and I do tend to let them dry and then I'll wet the paper and then I'll add some of this um, almost like stippling motion but it but I intend for it to spread out so I do that a lot in my paintings it's just a fun technique so but let me know, do you guys like mountains? Do you, um, are you mountaineers? <laughs> do you like hiking? Do you have mountains in your area? Let me know in the comments below. I am curious. I am on the West Coast, so we have very high mountains. So I live at very high elevation, um, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, I'm moving on to now layering it. Now that mountain is dry and I have taken the same color and I have just added less water to make it a bit darker. Now, you will see that that first mountain, the layer does pop through a little bit, but that's fine. I am going to move the paint around and I will just add some more paint over it and it will make it darker so you won't see it and that is something to keep in mind because of course watercolor is translucent so you'll be able to see those layers below uh, or underneath but once you add some more pigment it it goes away <laughs> and this is just a basic wash here but I hope this is easy for you. I'm trying to get better at explaining what I'm doing. It is definitely interesting. Um, but let, let me know if my instruction is somewhat helpful or helpful. <laughs> Hopefully it is. 
All right, now I am going into my third mountain. Now the mountain on the right is still wet and that's fine. You can layer mountains when they're wet and you can layer them when they're dry. They might spread a little bit if they're wet, of course. Um, so it's really up to you as far as a style uh, that you want. So, but yes, I have laid down the darkest shade here and I am spreading it out by adding a bit more water. And then I decided to uh, soften it as if there is some mist because I can't help myself, guys. I really love misty scenes. It's my favorite, favorite thing to paint. And it's just so much fun. All right, for this one, I am layering this mountain again. And I am using the same colors. Um, I don't believe I added titanium white to this. So it's just some burnt sienna and raw sienna mixed together because those two paints I have sitting right next to each other. <laughs> and I am just pulling the mountain uh, down and then I will go over it again and add just a bit darker, um, some darker areas. So, because I don't want the, the first layer of mountains to show through. So, but because the mountains were so light, it shouldn't be too hard to layer it, but definitely play around and experiment with, um, you know, what's going to work for you. It just, it just takes some time. So, but as the more you do it, the easier it does get. But that is pretty much all I do as far as mountains and layering and dropping in paint. So I think these are some fun ways as a beginner to play around with mountains. And these can be in the distance. They don't have to be your main um, piece uh, in your painting. So just do whatever, of course, that you like to do. But give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you found some value in this video. Thank you for spending time with me today. And if you made it to the end of this video, I applaud you. <laughs> So, but all right, guys, well, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care. Bye.